From childhood on, I've had dyslexia, and, ah. it, and it goes through the generations of my family, exclamation point. My cousins have ADHD, exclamation point. We all didn't have an easy childhood. School was a horror for me. I always felt misunderstood and that nothing made sense to me. What does dyslexia mean? And are ADHD and dyslexia connected? I have a trauma of being misunderstood by everyone. Okay, ADHD and dyslexia can, but are not always related. All right, I got a sand trick. This is like a really good one. Um, Ready? With dyslexia in and of itself, what's actually happening is that you have a different type of brain. Now, we as people like to think that everybody has the same brain. This is absolutely ridiculous. We have very different brains. Our brains function in very different ways. We think very differently. The brain of a dyslexic is a visual spatial brain. They cannot learn in the same way that other people learn. They have a difficult time sequencing. They have a difficult time with um, working memory. So what's very, very critical is to teach your brain in a different way than other people teach you. And this is why it's so hard in our, your mainstream schooling system, because the mainstream schooling system, even how it was created to begin with, is not created for the individual, is not created to maximize the potential of the individual mind of the child. It is a system that is designed to create a robot, basically, to fit into a system and to train that part of that system to function in a way that is the best of its you know, capacity. When, when we're doing this, when we're approaching a child with this approach, what we're trying to do is to, like, we're looking at a car engine. We've decided that everybody has to be, mm, like, the motor of the engine. And we're saying, well, be a motor. But what are you supposed to do if you're a belt? Like, you can't be a motor if you're a belt. And that's why everybody's failing, you know what I mean? So one th what we have not recognized with dyslexics is that they are visual spatial learners. I'm going to teach you something about your brain. You ready? If you've got this type of brain, then you have to be learning multisensorily. You have got to act to learn something and to convert it to long-term memory. You have got to learn it with your touch at the same time as your sight at the same time as your hearing, which is why you will find that, that learning things on a screen, like through a video, will work for you about 100 times better than if you're just listening to it, 100 times better than if you're just reading it. Like, if you involve all of the senses in learning of one thing, it will be converted to long-term memory. Knowing that, just I cannot tell you what that is going to open up for you. Which is why, by the way, you'll notice this. It's not really happening right now. I'm talking to you. But one of the reasons, actually, that I do so many demonstrations when I'm doing my workshops up on stage where I'm physically acting things out for you is because of people like you. Because... I mean, all people learn better when all senses are involved, but you have to. So there's a, a demographic of people that quite literally have to experience like everything in a multi-sensory way in order to even understand something. So that's what's going on with you. The visual spatial brain is valuable as hell because you're the builders of society. You make excellent engineers, incredible architects, because what you do is you see everything in 3D already. And by the way, I don't have that kind of mind. So I'm coming from the opposite side of the spectrum. I cannot, it blows my mind what you guys can do. When, if I'm looking at a hillside, I can't visualize something 3D there in order to figure out how to put the pieces together to build that thing, but your mind already goes there. You see everything in that way. Your, your mind does not work in a linear fashion. So that's what's going on with dyslexia. And it's our failure to, to understand how we have to teach to that specific type of brain that is making it so you even tell yourself there's anything wrong with you at all. Language is linear. Of course it doesn't make sense to you. <sighs> rant. Sorry, rant. Okay. What was, where were we going with that? Okay, so now we're going ADHD, right? Children who have brains that think that way, right? These are children who are naturally going to have a harder time paying attention to linear teaching. It makes no sense. It makes you antsy, right? And because you need to be learning in terms of your tactile sensations as well, you're a person who's constantly in motion, right? Now, this is why I'm saying that they can exist separately because it's in the future, we're not going to 
use ADHD as, a, as what we do today, which is a catch-all term, right? With ADHD, you're just catching all these kids that, that have these symptoms. And there are so many kids that have been labeled ADHD that are nothing of the kind. And this is why I'm saying, like, if you have a visual spatial brain, if you have a dyslexic brain, we need to actually consider that, that we're not seeing ADHD. We're seeing a behavior that a child has when they can't learn in that way and they need to learn in a different way. Now, for kids who, who we could say do actually fit into ADHD, right, and, and it's an accurate diagnosis, what's actually going on here is the regulation of anxiety. With kids who have ADHD, they come from environments of anxiety, without fail, every time. And what a kid is trying to do with the movement is to downregulate their actually it's like sensory integration. They're trying to downregulate their nervous system. And their attention issues is selective, and this is what we don't get. When a kid is in a state of stress and there's lots of stress around them, what do they do? They shut it down. So this is a kid who's instantly going to try to find one focus, and they're not going to pay attention to what they're supposed to be paying attention to. It's almost like they're going to condense their world as tiny as they can possibly get it and be in their own little world, fixated on whatever they want to be fixated on in any given time. They're trying to cope with extreme levels of stress in their environment. So unfortunately, until you get the anxiety level of the parents anxiety level of the environment down and to give them more of a sense of personal empowerment, they will not expand that bubble to include the world in it. So that's what's happening with ADHD. And yet again, like usual, most people are like, but we can see like actual physiological differences. Yeah, it's always going to be the case. Anytime you get a mental and emotional aspect, it's going to filter into the physical, and then you're going to see the physical precursors. You're going to see changes in chemi biochemistry and all of these things. It's not a contradiction, too. It's adjunct, too. But in my opinion, there is nothing that has been done, probably, to children since the introduction of antidepressants to, to children. There is nothing that has come into this mainstream society that is worse than the medication of children who we label as ADHD. It drives me absolutely up a tree. So, another soapbox moment. Oh. Sorry. Okay. You need a second. I need a second. I'm, I'm, it makes me mad. <coughs>